Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. The next one we'll be looking at is the dining table by Madam Hallowell. Now, ordinarily looking at the title of this book, you won't think it's talking about dinner. Um, normal dining setting where we are having a lovely um, three-course meal but the poet is only looking at the dining table using it as a kind of imagery portraying the aftermath of war now let's look at the background of this poem now this poem traces the 11 year civil war of Sierra Leone between 1991 to 2002. It was such a fierce war that was actually described as a dining table. You know, when you have a perfectly set table for dining, you have the glasses, you have the food, and um, the way the setting is at the beginning is different from how the table is at the end because by that time um, you would have finished eating everything on the table so the point is actually describing how the world looks like um, he describes he, he portrays the battlefield at the dining table where men were slaughtered and uh, he uses a lot of metaphors to explain bloodshed now the poem is a celebration of violence which saw brother bent on the estimating brother, that is brothers were killing brothers until the ECOWAS monitoring group called ECOMOG, led by Nigeria, put out the flames of destruction. So like I said, the dining table is just a poem portraying the aftermath of war. Now, this war occurred in Sierra Leone and other countries in Africa such as Angola, Algeria, Burundi, Cote d'Ivoire, Liberia, Somalia, Sudan, and so on. And the setting of this poem, and when we talk about the setting, we are looking at the time and the history, the time and place at which a certain history occurred. The title of the poem suggests that there is a gathering of diners, people who are about to feast on a meal, but it is a meal of bloodshed. It is um, a meal in which the poet mocks brothers who have gathered at the dining table to kill one another. Suggested when we talked about the background of this poem, it may have been a gathering of wounded countrymen in Sierra Leone, in the eastern part of the country, during the long civil war. The country is located in the tropical rainforest zone of Africa. We are looking at the time and place at which um, this war occurred. The poet makes use of different metaphors, several metaphors, making references to things like vegetable blood, um, desert tongues, uh, and guerrillas. Now, the subject matter and the summary of this poem. Now, the dining table is not a place where we have gathered to take drinks and to eat food. Rather, it portrays a place, it depicts a place where people have gathered to war, to fight. Like we say, it's a celebration of violence. However, people have come with gun wounds, with blood all over them. The pepper which is strong enough to push up scorpions in our heads. Now let me make reference to this poem. Let me read some lines in this poem for um, to give a, 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 an illustration of what is what it's all about. The first line says, Dinner comes tonight with gun wounds. Our dessert tongues lick the vegetable blood, the pepper, strong enough to push scorpions off our heads. Let's look into the ocean bowls as vegetables die on their Tongue. Now, the table separates the combatants from wicked leaders. That is, the table refers to the guerrillas. 
we are informed that there are also children who are in, who, 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 who were also involved in this war. As at the time of the war, um, the people made use of child soldiers to fight their war. And um, this was almost like plucking out their innocence. Innocence, we imagine little children going to fight war. So this was plucking out their innocence. So now we we'll look at the stanza by stanza analysis. Now, from line one to six, the poet explains dinner as not a usual feast. It's a dinner of gum wounds, vegetable blood, pepper, and scorpions. Now you must note that the most predominant theme, sorry, the most predominant poetic device used here is a metaphor. Now this poem looks at a, it looks at a landscape devastated by the spoliation that is brought about by war. The portrait of the devastated land is reinforced by the fact that it is night, the time of evil, darkness, and horror. Now, like I said earlier, when making reference to other points, and when we look at African poetry, we are actually explaining the issues that have plagued Africa in time past and also in present. Now, we said that this is an aftermath of war. Lines six to eight, the guests that are being referred to, they are also partakers of dinner. They are ceremonials who come to observe this macabre dinner. They look into the oceans of bulls, the horrors. They are witnesses to this war. Um, hence, there are two types of tongues, desert tongue, which could refer to the tongue of gunfire, and human tongue with which to taste this grisly dinner. Now, what? Imagine a war that just takes place, maybe in your community or in your area. Imagine death. Imagine blood. Imagine the desolation. Imagine people in despair. Imagine the loss of loved ones. Imagine a brother killing brothers, friends who are against friends. Now, we find out that this war that occurred in Sierra Leone was actually as a result of, um, you know, Sierra Leone is, is, a, is a country that is rich in diamonds. Um, so they were actually fighting for this uh, natural resources. Uh, it is also similar to um, what we have in other countries, like in Nigeria, for instance, where militants were said to fight for a common cause, which had to do with getting the natural resources of the land. It's similar to what we see in Sierra Leone. Everyone, there was this scramble for the diamonds, which uh, led to bloodshed and so much violence at that time. Now, looking at line 9 to 16, the combatants and the wounded soldiers are on the table brewing their faith. The child soldiers, references are made to child soldiers. They are described as children from Alphabeta. They participate in this dinner, which means that they were also participating in this war. The poet begins to ask, when the playground is empty of children's toys, who needs woodblocks? You know, the fact that the children have taken their toys inside. This also has to do with plucking the innocence of children because they have been flung into the throes of war. Line 16 to 18, the land has become both sterile and arid, very dry, because of the destructiveness of war. The dryness said the necessity for the throat to be assuaged of its thirst. But the water has been polluted by vegetable blood and gum wounds. Thus, the threat of cholera on cracked leaks is real. Line 19 to 23. The poet um, tasted the spilled milk of the moon. Now this is a metaphor, which might as well be the blood of fellow youths. It promises to be a revolutionary. A revolutionary is somebody who has promised or who vows to do something differently. He suffers a dramatic upturn and decides to support 
a new way of doing things in order to bring about a positive change in the society. However, the revolutionary has its own problems, namely business and indecision. We see this in this line. Now upon it now, with a pile of drawbacks, layers, and incapacities. So, in a nation where that has been plagued by war, usually when there is a problem in the land, someone or a couple of people may dare to fight. But sometimes the problem, the aftermath of bloodshed, the, 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 the problem tends to weaken the attempt of this revolutionary or the individuals who want to rise up to change. Line 23 to 26, the poet returns to what happens at dinner tonight. Um, the obstacles, he examines the obstacles, the drawbacks, which weigh heavily. So such is his weariness that the speaker expects to boot, expects the boot to walk him rather than the contrary. Okay, so now we're going to examine the things, the central ideas that are being examined that Hallowell examined in the poem, the dining table. The first is war and destruction, okay, which we have emphasized the aftermath of war, gun wounds, death, pain, or gun battles. The second is suffering, of course, after there is death of loved ones. The land is desolate, the land is bare, the land is, is, is people are dying. So the poet looks at suffering. Um, there is also the theme of child soldiers. Children are being used to fight the war, their innocence is plucked out. Now we find out that um, this is also similar to what is happening in Nigeria too, where children, youth, are being indoctrinated into terrorism. Most of the time they are hypnotized and indoctrinated, made to believe that they are fighting for a good cause. But at the end of the day, they are wrecking havoc. This is what child soldiers typify in this poem. So we also look at the theme of violence and bloodbath. The entire poem is about violence, bloodshed, of course, the use of metaphors illustrate this. Desert tongues, vegetable blood, gun wounds. Now we will be looking at the poetic devices used. Um, first off, the poet uses personification. The first line says, Dinner comes tonight with gun wounds. Dinner is given the attributes of a human, as if it's, it's a human, but dinner is an inanimate abstract thing. Also, our desert tongues, which we have identified as gunshots, capable of um, desertifying, that is when they are aimed, it is said to leak vegetable blood. Alright, so we'll be looking at the poetic devices, the figures of speech used in this poem. Now, like I said earlier, the major poetic device that is being used in this poem is metaphor. Of course, the dining table itself is a metaphor, which is a level ground. I mean, it's, it's a direct comparison to a level ground, as is where a war takes place. They made reference to guerrillas, crocodiles, switchblades, scorpions, gun wounds, vegetable blood. All of these are metaphors. Another figure of speech or poetic device used is the feminism. It's a method by which the poet um, expresses an unpleasant situation um, using mild expressions. Um, for example, the expression dining table actually, you would think he is referring to a normal dinner, but he is referring to a battleground. There are other 
examples of euphemisms that are found in the poem. The poet also makes use of the use of irony and mockery. The dining table itself is irony because the poem, the language used, is ironical. One of the ways the poet achieves this is by placing contrast. For example, placing dinner and gun moves together is ironical. The poet also uses dinner and tongues, vegetable, pepper, gun, and wound. All these are portraying the use of irony and mockery. We often made reference to scorpions and where vegetables die. Now all these are use of irony. Take note that some questions will be displayed on the screen so as to determine how much you learn in the class. Thank you.